Well, hello everybody, it's Jimmy, and I'm glad to be back in my shop here in Stewart, Florida. And uh, today I'm going to share with you a restoration project on uh, this little drill press that I picked up at the flea market. Come on. Let's take a closer look at this. This is a 1936 Wizard, and it has what I think is the original paint. And I thought a long time about whether I want to repaint this or not. I decided to leave it the way it is. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it all apart and clean up all the parts and degrease it. So put this in a mineral spirits bath and see if I can kind of recover some of its glory. Uh, this is a belt drive that goes to this little sewing machine motor. Now this motor was mounted here by the gentleman I bought it from but if you look at the photographs there should be a couple pulleys here and then the belt should be routed down below and the motor should be underneath this little drill press. So I'm going to put it on this uh, wooden base here. I got this thing out of the dumpster here at the shop. I don't know who threw it away, but it's a really nice piece of wood. I think it'll be just perfect for this project. So the plan is to mount the drill on the wooden base that I showed you and uh, the motor will be hung under. Now I've got to create a carriage for the motor and so the idea that I have is that the motor weight uh, will be used to stretch the belt and that carriage will be hinged back around here. Because there are two pulleys um, I'll need to have some adjustability on the position of the motor so I have the right tension in the belt. The platform will have to be raised up right around three inches, uh, three and a half inches to give clearance for the motor. So I'm going to make some legs out of this uh, piece of one and a quarter inch sapelli that I've got here. I've already drawn it out here. So I'll cut that out on the bandsaw. <laughs> I've roughed out the legs for this. I've decided to put this on three legs so that it's always stable when it's sitting on a table. So I've just used a half inch dowel to put it onto the bottom of this uh, base here. And so these are rough. I'll finish up nice, but it'll look something like this. And I think that'll be nice and stable once I get it glued up. So now I'm going to move on to making the carriage for the motor. Uh, so the next step is I need to uh, bend this piece and, and get a hole in it so that the, the table can, uh, can pass through it. And then I'll create a hinge point uh, that will attach to the underside uh, right here. So that's tomorrow. See you then. In thinking about this, I realized that I really needed to cut the slot for the table support to pass through before I do the bends. So here I'm cutting the slot on my mini mill. All right. To get the bends I need, I paid a visit to my friend Ted's shop. He has a homemade brake press that works really well. The steel work is done on the carriage here. And uh, amazingly, I had every single piece I needed right here in the shop on hand. The screws, the washers, the hinge even. It pays to be a hoarder sometimes. Well, it's time to do something for this missing idler uh, arrangement here. Uh, there's a cross shaft here. This journal is drilled for a quarter inch, but it's a very tight quarter inch, so I may have to ream that a little bit. But I'm going to have a cross shaft here, and I'll have a couple of uh, little pulleys that'll take the urethane belt, and we'll let it drop down below to pick up the motor. So I had to put a little bit of thought into this and do some measuring to come up with the design. So I have a design here for it, uh, but. When I was uh, doing this, it dawned on me I was designing a V-belt uh, type sheave here to cut on the lathe, but I realized you really don't want uh, high friction at this point. So instead of doing this uh, like a V-belt sheave, I'm just going to cup this out. I'm going to make a nice saddle for the urethane belt to ride in so that there's a minimum of friction here. You don't really want any friction between the belt and the uh, this idler. So let's head over to the lathe and cut this out of this piece of aluminum.
I'm going to use a brass cross shaft. I've got a nice tight sliding fit into the journal there. Uh, finished my little pulleys or spools, whatever you want to call them. And uh, they'll need to be spaced out in order to work properly uh, with the pulleys. So off camera I made these little spacers and uh, this is just about how these are going to sit. So I'll uh, thread these and I'll be putting acorn nuts on the end of each side of this. By measurement, I would have thought quarter inch urethane belting would be perfect for this tool, but when I received it and installed it, it turned out to be way too heavy. It was not flexible enough, so this was a total fail. Back to the drawing board. This thing has got 80 years of grease and grime, so I'm going to take her apart and uh, give her a mineral spirits bath. Got everything cleaned up as much as I'm going to. Uh, starting with the frame here, uh, I use mineral spirits just to get the grease off of it. I didn't want to go too far because a lot of the paint was loose and unfortunately I did lose a good bit uh, of it. I forgot to mention that this has uh, press fit brass bushings in the aluminum casting uh, for the quill and uh, they seem to be in real good shape. Uh, the lever, the plunge lever for the quill if I looked at original pictures of these things, uh, there's one that there's a photo of one that's new in the box apparently, and it does not have a painted lever. So I went ahead and cleaned the red paint off of this and polished it up a little bit. I think that is cast aluminum. Uh, the quill uh, is in really good shape. So I'm soldering new leads on the motor here, and then I'll cover up this joint uh, with some heat shrink tubing. Carpentry is done on this, so I'm just putting a little bit of stain on it and uh, probably a little bit of paste wax to pretty it up when this dries. I've got the uh, wiring com coming around here from the uh, leads that I uh, soldered on, and so the wires go into this little box here that I made, and uh, there's a toggle switch there, and uh, it's stands proud off the bottom so I had to make this little cover and that's coped out but it'll fit over the top and then it'll fit down tightly on the on the incoming wires and the outgoing wires like that and then I'll have a couple of screws that'll hold that flush so that'll provide stress relief here for the cord they said 10 days on shipping I had it inside of 48 hours Pretty good. Let's give it a try. We'll see how we do with this new belt. It seems to uh, fit just right. And uh, this is the maiden voyage of the Wizard Junior Reimagined. And boy, that looks really good. I still have a little weld that's a little bit uh, thick on the urethane belting, but uh, boy, she sounds good. Got a little drill bit in here and uh, just popping some holes in here. This. I had bought a fireplace set all made out of brass at a yard sale and I've been using that brass on projects for a long time and I wanted something nice to be able to uh, tighten the table post and uh, this thing uh, has a, an insert uh, that uh, lets you screw it right onto a quarter twenty. So I just created a new bolt here and ran that through. Just another look at the underside here. Went with the cabriolet style legs of the Louis the Fifteenth period. I felt that was appropriate for this particular vintage drill press all my small bits I'll just put them right here so I put a couple of brass pegs into the base and uh, these are there are matching holes 
on the little bit holder so I can take that off when I need to clean it or whatever but I can put it right back on there again. Went with the regular toggle switch here and my buddy thought I ought to go with a push button but I think this will work out just fine. This little guy here, he's the job supervisor, foreman, and uh, this is his machine. He's going to make sure you follow the rules, and uh, I've named him Drillbert. So make sure you respect Drillbert if you ever use this machine. This piece is going to be for just plastics and uh, small wood, that sort of thing. Quill is uh, nice. It's very accurate. You can really get a good pinpoint uh, on small items like this. And uh, so it's a great little hobby machine. And uh, for those things that are just too small for my big drill press.